I'm Captain Ron, and this is Brisket on a Minimax. In today's video, we're diving into the epic world of brisket on the Big Green Egg Minimax. Ever wondered if you could tackle a whole brisket on a grill this size? Well, we're here to show you it's not just possible, it's amazing. We'll walk you through every step, from trimming the brisket just right to seasoning with a killer blend of salt and pepper. We'll even throw in a secret bun that'll take your flavors to the next level. You'll also learn why cooking the fat cap down is crucial, how to properly set up your charcoal for a long smoke, and the best woods to use for that extra smoky goodness. Stay until the end for a special tip on how to rest and slice the brisket for maximum flavor and tenderness. Don't forget to check out the full recipe in the video description. We've been doing a bunch of videos on the Minimax lately, and we have gotten questions and requests, all kinds of things. One of them is, can you do brisket on a Minimax? Well, I mean, it's kind of bigger than a grill, isn't it? But yes, we are gonna cook this pack of brisket on this Minimax today. Why am I using a whole pack of brisket instead of just a brisket flat? Well, let me tell you why. Because when I was at the store, the brisket flat was almost as much as the entire brisket. It was like, I don't know, $7.49 a pound compared to like $4.19 a pound. The other thing is that the brisket flat was only choice. This is prime. So you're getting a much better quality piece of meat and kind of saving yourself some money while doing it. So our first step in our process is going to be to trim this baby up. Um, briskets come with a big fat cap on them and on the top side, there's a lot of silver skin. So we're gonna clean this up. And like I said too, we wanna make it aerodynamic for it to fit on this grill. And this is a beautiful hunk of meat. You're gonna cook on the Minimax. Don't start with an 18 pound brisket, okay? That's just silly. So try and keep it making sense, all right? There she is in all of her glory. Again, the flat section here point section here. Now, the first thing I like to do when I'm trimming my briskets here is I take the flat side up and you're gonna get this big hunk of fat on the side. I like to kind of stick my thumb underneath it here and just kind of pull back and you can see right where it's gonna come off, all right? You can use your finger and really separate it out really well, okay? So that's what we're gonna do there first just so we get a good idea of where to start it. But remember, when you're trimming your brisket, you don't have to go in giant slices at the same time, all right? What you wanna do is get it so that you're just getting down to the meat. All right, this is kind of a weird flap of fat here, so we're gonna cut that. Now, don't gouge down into the meat either, okay? You wanna just take the rough fat off. And if you have, like, um, the looser fat, the soft fat, that's okay, that's gonna render down nicely. But this hard fat like this is just not gonna render. So, let me trim this off here, even a little bit of the soft fat, that's okay. Now, we're gonna get a lot of fat off of this thing, okay? This was 13 pounds. We're probably gonna pull three, maybe four pounds of fat off of this. No problem, that's okay, especially since it's going on the Minimax. We don't have to worry about that. The flat side, I like to get as much of the silver skin off, as much of this that you can, because it's gonna just help the seasoning penetrate better, okay? We want seasoning to penetrate this entire thing. One thing I'd like to recommend to you guys is use a good sharp knife, okay? This knife that we sell here works perfectly. It's made by Kai, which is the uh, same company that makes Shun knives. Um, it's a boning fillet knife. It's perfect for what we're doing. It's absolutely perfect. Easy to use, fits comfortably in the hand, and it stays sharp. I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed at how sharp these things stay. And there we go, a nicely trimmed brisket flat. Now, the work begins. <laughs> now, your brisket's gonna come with a big fat cap on it like this. That's okay, that's supposed to, but we are gonna trim quite a bit of it off. We're gonna get that down to about a quarter of an inch thickness, so don't be afraid just to whack all of the extra stuff off like this. Okay, again, I told you we're gonna trim a lot of fat off. It's probably three to four pounds worth of fat on a 13 pound brisket. It's not uncommon. Okay, so what we see what we're doing here, we're getting this down about a quarter of an inch over on top of the meat. Also, when you buy your brisket, you might get some brown spots, okay? Like you see here, there's brown on this here. I'm gonna cut that all off. Just means air has gotten to it. It's not bad, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna trim that off as well, because that's what I do. Now, save all of these trimmings, okay? Maybe we should make a video. I'm gonna make burgers out of this. You can grind them up, make burgers. You can, uh, we did a video on how to make beef tallow. That video's right there. Can you see all the brown that's on this meat here? I'm just gonna trim that off. You don't have to go thick. It's just a, it's just a very outer layer, okay? Again, it's not bad. I'm gonna save it. We're gonna grind that and use it for brisket as well. Now, this fat cap on here, you know, it does a couple things. A, it's gonna help with the flavor of the meat, the tenderness of the meat, because this fat's gonna render. Uh, it's kind of helps it to self-base when it's cooking. But one of the things that we do is in a big green egg, we're always gonna cook this with the fat cap down, all right? We've done other videos on how to cook it with the fat cap up, but for the most part, you're gonna do it with the fat cap down. Um, what happens is that this is gonna protect it from the heat. Because the convector is right below it, it still gives off a lot of heat. And if you don't use this, if you don't do this, you're gonna wind up burning the bottom of that brisket, and it's all gonna be unusable anyway. And there we have our trimmed brisket. Now, it should be ready to go on the Minimax, right? Uh, Houston, we have a problem. All right, so what I wanna do is, when I do put this on to cook, I'm gonna kinda push it together and bunch it up to make it a little bit fatter. This way we can fit more of it on there. So we're gonna kinda measure it out, edge to edge here. We go from about here, make a 
little mark to about here. Okay, we're gonna cut this in a semicircular pattern. Now, you're all gonna yell at me about this, all right? But if you wanna do this on the Minimax, this is what we need to do is trim this off of here. Run, that's a lot of meat. Yes, it is, okay? It's a big old hunk of meat. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save it. So I can either cook this as a brisket flat, I might make corned beef out of it, might make pastrami out of it. Oh, now we're talking, all right? But what we have now is, I wanna show you something. On the flat end, you can see this one was very thin, very, very thin. I didn't worry about that when I was shopping for it. Normally when I'm looking for a brisket, I want the flat to be like this fat all the way across. But what we have here, no problem. We cut that right off. And now our flat end is nice and fat and thick. Make sure it's gonna fit. It's tight, but it's gonna fit. Look at that, beautiful. We're going for a mini max brisket, I'm so excited. This next step is kind of up to you. Some people like to use a binder, some people don't. Um, my last two briskets I made, I did something different. I used W sauce as a binder, and my family said it was the two best briskets I've ever made. Coincidence, I don't know. That's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna use some W sauce, just put a little binder on here. It's gonna just help make the rub stick better, that's all. It shouldn't need it, because it's plenty wet, but this Worcestershire gives it an absolutely wonderful flavor. All right, so we're gonna put it on. Just rub it around. We don't want a thick coating, you just want, you know, you just want to moisten the outside of it. Okay, you wanna rub your meat. And then we're gonna coat it with 50-50 salt and pepper. This is a beautiful one right here. This, I was so happy when they made this. This is made by Lane's. We actually actually available on our website. There'll be a link for it down below in the description. It's 50-50 kosher salt and, and coarse mesh pepper, 15, uh, 16 mesh pepper. What that does, it gives you equal size salt and pepper. So you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but it's the same all the way up. It's not like the pepper sat to the bottom, not like the salt. It's the same all the way through. So I'm just gonna give this a real nice coating. I like to go pretty solid when I'm coating my briskets. I want full coverage of rub on here. Okay, pat it in. You know, I know it's called rub. Actually, I've noticed more companies are calling it seasoning these days, okay? Instead of calling them rubs. Pat it down in there. If you rub it, you're just gonna rub all this stuff off of there, okay? Don't do that. Don't be that guy or girl, whatever. Okay, just as important as everything else, we gotta get the sides. We want this thing completely covered in rub. Mini Max, Maxi Flavor. Again, even though it's the fat side, I'm gonna give a little coat, W sauce. Flavor all around, baby. And there we have a seasoned brisket. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go sit this in the refrigerator while we get the grill going and get it lit. I like to put a cold brisket on there. They say it helps with the smoke ring, they say it helps with a lot of different things. So put a cold brisket onto a hot grill. That's what we wanna do. So, if you haven't done this in a while, to the refrigerator! Time to light the grill. Now normally, I recommend our yellow bag for low and slow smokes for smoking long-term cooks. But since we're using the Mini Max, we want a little bit smaller. This is our medium-sized charcoal, the black bag. It's perfect for smoking in the Mini Max. Perfect. You can use this for smoking in any grill you want, okay? But um, it's our all-around grilling charcoal. It's a fantastic flavor, nice, light, and easy. So we're gonna fill this basket up right to below the convector and get this baby lit. Normally when I light my grill, I'm gonna put a blaze ball in there and fill it with two fire starters. It's the greatest way to light your grill. But for this application, because we're working with a small charcoal space, I don't wanna take up that much space with the blaze ball. So we're gonna pour our charcoal in, we're gonna put the starters in, then we're gonna light it. So let's fill this baby up to the maximum that it'll take. Let's see what we got. Now what I like to do when I'm smoking in my Minimax, I try and fit the charcoal in as best I can. If I have pieces that don't fit, I'll take them out and find something else. I want the maximum amount of charcoal in here that I can fit that's gonna last for the duration. I don't wanna have to refill this thing. With the Minimax, you don't have to. That's the beautiful part about it. The good part about our Fogo charcoal is that sometimes the chunks are just too big. What a good problem to have. Now we're using our beautiful Fogo, all natural Fogo fire starters here. Again, they are all natural. And a little hit from the grill torch. We're up and running. Well, here we are, it is August 13th, and it is literally 100 degrees out here, and it had 92% humidity this morning, and it rained just a little while ago, so it is just hot out here. I bet that some of you guys wish you had some of this heat right about now, because I know it's even starting to cool off in some places. But let's talk about smoking woods, all right? While this is lighting up and getting ready, we're gonna talk about smoking woods. You can use anything. I like, to, on briskets a lot of times, I like to use cherry. You can use post oak, oak is great, you know. I still love these. Ah, it's a party in a bag, as Russ Welch says, Eagle Egger Welch, um, because they are made from bourbon barrels, okay? These were actually hand cut from bourbon barrels in Kentucky, and they used as smoking woods. It gives such a great flavor. 
I'm not saying it because we sell it. I use these when we're not filming videos. I use these in competitions. I use them everywhere that I cook. I just love them. I have not used any other woods in a long time. So once this gets to pink, I'm gonna put about three pieces in here. I left a little bit of room on top. So we're gonna use three smoking chunks. So that's gonna give a nice flavor and let the smoke really build beautifully on that brisket. Give it a smoke ring and just give it that extra little flavor and that, ooh, that sweet bourbon goodness. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one right down in there in the fire and the other two I'm gonna put right on top and kind of next to it like that, so that they'll fit. And just like we do with any other indirect cooking, we're gonna put our convector in. Okay, just like that. Our grate, and we're gonna let this heat up. We're gonna cook it, we're gonna cook today at 250 to 275 degrees on this brisket. So we'll let it come to temperature and throw that baby on here. Woo, who's excited? Good news, everybody. We got two good things going on. Our smoke is mostly cleared up, so we got some nice blue smoke going, and our brisket is ready to go. So, last thing we have to do now, not last thing to do, but for now, I'm gonna take this. Notice I put it on this nice rack here when I put it in the refrigerator. What that does, it allows the cold air to get underneath it as well. So all I'm gonna do here is stick this baby right on here. Okay, and like I said before, we're gonna try and crunch it up as best we can so that it fits real good. We want the biggest piece of meat possible on here, okay? And we're gonna track our temperatures with our meter thermometer, okay? I'm gonna put it in the thickest part of the uh, of the flat here, okay? Make sure the tip of the meter is in the center of your meats. Tip of the meter in the center of your weeks. There's your tip of the week. All right, now, time to let her sleep for a while. Good news, we're about five hours in and this thing has reached temperature for wrapping. So what I did is I kind of let it go a little over. I set it for 165 and then my bark wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. So I let it go for a little bit longer. Now we're gonna handle hot meat, right? So there's only one thing to do. You know, these, everybody gets these fancy heat gloves for handling meat and everything like that. And always get yourself a pair of these cotton gloves and just put a pair of neoprene gloves over them. It works like a champion, all right? So we're gonna wrap, our, we're gonna go ahead and wrap our brisket in butcher paper. So we lay it out and grab our meat. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful thing. Beautiful bark, gorgeous setup. The bottom is looking great, it didn't stick at all. It is absolutely looking perfect. Now to wrap it, I'm gonna pull the meter thermometer out, tear it off a long enough piece. You wanna have plenty of paper to cover your meat. The last thing you want is having your meat uncovered. Now I'm gonna place my brisket upside down on the paper. I'm gonna fold my paper over once, all the way down on both sides. Fold the other side over as well, just like that, okay? Now take both ends, wrap one in like that, wrap one in like that. You can fold any extra that you have like that. Now what we have is a perfectly sealed beef brisket that's going back on there with the meter in it. Notice how much easier the meter went in this time. We we'll set it back on there. Okay, we're cooking about 270 degrees right now. We'll let that go until it hits 203 degrees. It should be probe tender. We're gonna double check it when it's done like that. And it's gonna be an absolutely beautiful thing. Can you believe it? A brisket on a mini max? How cool is that? All right, guys, we've reached that magic time. The brisket is done. Now this is something interesting happened here. Okay, I set it for 203, came out, checked it. You know what? It was still tough as can be. So I had to let it go to 207 actually before it got probe tender and the thing would just go in like that. So we use 203 as a guideline, but that's not always our finishing temperature. Okay, so here we have it all finished. I'm gonna put it in this half tray because I don't like messes. And we're gonna put it into a Cambro. I have a Cambro here. If you have a cooler, that's fine too. The reason I put it into that half tray first, I don't wanna make a mess in here. I hate cleanup. So we're gonna let this sit here now. If you have a cooler, you can put it in there, wrap it in a towel or something like that if you wanna you know, insulate it. The Cambros are really good. They're self-insulated. We're gonna rest this for a minimum of one hour. People ask me all the time, hey, how long can you rest a brisket for? I've actually rested a brisket one time for almost 10 hours and it was still piping hot coming out of the Cambro. Amazing. And it was tender. The reason, the reason that we want to rest it, okay, is that it's going to redistribute all those juices, all those muscles as it was cooking that are expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting. What happens is that now they all redistribute and everything goes like that. You know, when you give that brisket the jiggle, that's what you're looking for, okay? So we're going to let this rest, like I said, for at least one hour. We're going to come back, we're going to slice it, and we're going to see how we did. Well, 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 surprise, surprise. Look at that. The meat's about to be cut and family starts showing up. Woohoo, hello. You all remember my daughter, Caitlin? Hi, Caitlin. Th that made no sense. I. I didn't say say hello, Caitlin. It's all I know. All right. 
Anyway, food's about to be cut, so we got a beautiful brisket. Where are you headed to? I know you're getting ready to leave. Where are you going? Um, I'm actually just headed out to go to the skate park. <gasps> just going to the pump track in Miami. Nice. You want to see some cool skateboarding? Jump on Instagram, Kate Surf Skate. Go check it out, right? K-A-I-T to the surf to the skate, baby. Woo! She might be adopted. Yeah. All right, bye. All right, kids, let's finish this thing up. I want to see how this turned out. So we're going to take our brisket out of here. Okay. Look at that. Woo, that's a beauty. Oh, I know I've said it before. I wish there was smell-o-vision because you guys would be freaking out right now. Feels good. Got a little texture to it. Got a little movement. That butcher paper is just soaked, man. And here it is, the grand reveal. You ready? Look at that baby. Oh, yeah, I think it's got that jiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Well, now that we've reached that point, I think there's only one thing left to do. Let's slice it. Now, remember, you always want to cut across the grain. So you can see in this one, the grain is running this way. So we're going to slice it here. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. Tender as can be. Tenderoni, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my. This should be illegal. Look at that. Is that a beautiful thing or what? Oh, but, okay. Well, there you go. Oh, okay. Oh, there it went. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see how it is. Oh, yeah. It's hot. <laughs> it is hot. Mmm. Tender, juicy. That's freaking delicious. The flavor is all there, too. You can taste the meat and you can taste, like, I like that nice, strong pepper flavor in a brisket. And that's, that, that's right there. That is good. We use that Lane's, um, that Lane's rub on it, 50-50 salt and pepper. So good. So Never good. Fails. All right. Bye. Be gone with you. <laughs> yeah, that's a beauty. So I think that this pretty much told the tale that, yes, we can cook a brisket on a Minimax. How about that, huh? Pretty darn cool. So I'm gonna continue slicing this. I'm gonna eat this thing up because I am starving. We've been doing this all day and I am hungry and it's been like the hottest day of the year out here. Literally, we just got news that it was the hottest day of the year right now. So anyway, folks, that's it. Um, while we got you here, remember, subscribe to our channel, okay? We'd love for you to join us. We'd love to hit 100,000. We're headed there and we need your help. Share this with your friends. Tell them we wanna hit 100,000 subscribers, okay? Uh, and until then, remember to comment on the video, give us a thumbs up, a like, and remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron, out. <laughs>